Hey there, everyone. Uh, this is going to be my, I guess, top 10 games of 2015. I wasn't originally going to do this video. I thought, like, eh, I didn't play a ton of new games in 2015. I played a bunch of retro stuff, and then I played... I mean, I played enough games to make a top 10, so it's not like I didn't play a lot. But I haven't played, um, you know, all of the games that I wanted to play in 2015, but um, it's just not going to happen. I'm not going to go back to, to those games anytime soon. So might as well just make the list of what I did and hopefully that'll be okay. I mean, it's it's an all right list. It's not like I'm upset any of these games are in here because I didn't have enough. I mean, I had enough. There's games that didn't make it. But yeah, there is this, uh, this top 10 list here. So I'm just going to go right into it and maybe it'll be long. Maybe it'll be short. I don't know. I haven't recorded it yet. But... So here, my number 10 game is um, on the Vita, and maybe the only Vita game on the list, which is, comparatively, I think 2014 had like three or four Vita games. It was a lot. Um, I didn't get a ton of stuff this year. There was stuff that came out that I wanted, I just didn't get um, for various reasons. Um, but yeah, that this game is uh, Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Um, I don't know. I... I all of these games have a review on my channel somewhere, so if you want to hear me really talk about them, you can. But generally, this is a good game. I don't really like music rhythm games. It probably would have been more fun if I enjoyed rhythm games a ton. Uh, I mean, I don't hate them, but I don't usually buy them. And this one has a story mode, and I figured, eh, I, I'm, I'm kind of at my limit with Persona 4 at this at this point. Like, after the, the fighting games, which had... Um, not very interesting stories and weren't incredibly fun for me um i kind of thought like man they're really testing my patience with persona 4 here and persona q was okay i mean it was 3 and 4 but like it wasn't it wasn't bad i mean it was a good game overall in terms of like playing it but persona 4 dancing i thought like okay i'm gonna get it and it's gonna be probably okay but um you know, generally, I'm not, like, a huge fan of the Persona music. It's not, like, something I am, like, I'm not, like, blasting on my headphones or whatever. It's not in my iPod or whatever. It's not on there. Uh, I'm not going to listen to it anywhere else. But, like, since I, you know, if you play a Persona game, it's, like, 100 hours. You're just, you've got 100 hours you're going to sink into it if you're going to try and do everything. So, you've heard all the songs a million times, so they're just kind of in your head. It's kind of, um, you know, an easy thing to get used to but this game does does some good things it repeats songs way too much and i'm the story is like kind of garbage for the first like half and i i thought like this is when i was first playing it, i thought like it's an all right rhythm game but man this story i kind of don't like this and then it got better i mean it didn't ever get really great but it got better so I mean, overall, it was fun, and I cleared all the songs, and I went through everything. So, I mean, I played it enough to, like, enjoy it. And I didn't... After I finished it, I haven't, like, felt like, yeah, I really want to go back and play it again. But what I, the time I spent with it was, was fun, comparatively, at least. So, there we go. Number 10 is Persona 4 Dancing All Night. Number 9, uh, this is the first 3DS game, and there were a bunch on this. Uh, 3DS has, like, three or four in here. Um, but... The first one here is going to be Codename Steam. I'm not sure when this came out in the U.S., but it came out earlier in the U.S. than in Japan, so this might actually be from last year for Japan, like 2014, but, I mean, for America, but I don't remember. But it definitely came out in 2015 for Japan, and maybe in the summer, like, kind of early summer. But, yeah, I, I think this game got a... Um, kind of unfairly maligned it's not like a it's it's a lot like a kind of goofy less serious version of, of valkyria chronicles is how i would explain it like the the kind of battle system but like i enjoy all the characters the characters are kind of like uh american folklore characters like but there's characters from like the kind of peter pan and then there's like johnny appleseed and you've got all these kind of strange characters together john henry and stuff like that and i kind of enjoy those characters the kind of folk folk characters that uh are in this game but you've got other i mean you've got non-folk characters i guess there's like queequeg is in there um you don't i mean he's not like a folk character he's he's a 
literature, character from literature, but all the characters are like that except for, you know, obviously Abraham Lincoln. But, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a pretty fun game, and I really enjoyed this, I think, a lot more than um, most people did. I don't know, um, even like people I talk to normally didn't really enjoy it that much, but I really like this game. I played it a lot, and I played it like right through, and I thought like, wow, this is a lot of fun. I think maybe it's just like the kind of mixture of the world and the characters and just the way it worked was really fun for me. And it kind of all clicked together in a nice way. Um, I, it got sort of middling reviews, but I, I don't think it deserves that. I think it deserves a bit better um, because it's a, it's a better game. So yeah, Codename Steam, that's number nine. And number eight... Um, this one is, what is the name? Sekaiju to Fushigi no Dungeon, which is uh, Etri and Mystery Dungeon in English, which um, this is, you know, another kind of mystery dungeon game. It's a, it's a roguelike. It's on the 3DS, you can see by the cover. Um, and I, I put a lot of time into this game, and it was fun. You know, I went through, and I beat it, and I did a bunch of extra stuff, and I played it a ton. And I, I think, like, it doesn't re really feel... Um, like um it's very difficult like when you play um Etrian odyssey you expect it to, there to be some like crazy difficulty spikes and that doesn't really ever happen in this it doesn't get like crazy in any way and it does do a really good job of combining the two games into one where it feels like both games at once like it really does you know the interface is very Etrian Odyssey so like you go through and it feels like you're playing Etrian Odyssey the character upgrades are the same it kind of works all the sound effects and things are really good and then you have the mystery dungeon kind of play style which doesn't isn't like incredibly changed I mean that you have a party of four people is different sort of I mean usually if you're playing like Shiren or something you have like one person plus like maybe another person like one or two maybe two if you depending on like where you are in the game or whatever and which game but uh, yeah this was a really fun game and if you haven't played a roguelike it's not so difficult so i think you can kind of go th it's a, it's a good kind of first step into the roguelike and it's also one that doesn't involve like pokemon or chocobos or something it's like legit in the sense that you can make your own party and it's um fun and if you like shiren you should play it because you can actually make like a furai character i don't know what they're called in the english version but uh they're the dude with the big hat so that was number eight and number seven a game i expected to be higher when i bought it but after i played it i thought well it didn't actually turn out that way so this is a fire emblem if or fire emblem fates i think it's called in english this is the the, the special edition where it has like the uh, um, all three versions and if you look at my review I did play all three versions entirely through before I did the before I talked about the game and it's just um, it's first like if, if you watch my review you, I have a lot of complaints um, but it's a, this game it it's good it's a good game but it's 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 a crazy kind of disappointment in, in a lot of ways um, because it's not it's not as good as the previous game. It's actually actively worse than the previous game in a lot of ways. And that doesn't make it a bad game. Like even a even like an actively worse Fire Emblem game is still a good Fire Emblem game. And it does a lot of things that are the same as the previous version, but it changes some things for the worse and it adds things for the worse. Um and it man seriously there's like this touching mechanic and you guys when this game comes out you are gonna know exactly what i'm talking about because there is this touching thing unless they shorten it for the u.s version it's painfully long it takes forever it takes like way longer than you would even possibly want to do it even in like the first time you're you even if you're like really into this kind of thing like uh you would do it once and you'd be like oh okay but you know as you had to do it a hundred times like you're just gonna be like Jesus, I can't believe I have to still do this. And you do. You just... It's constant, and it's annoying, and I hated it. I hated every minute of doing the rubbing in this game. It was stupid. And it took, it takes too long. One time with it just takes too long, and it, like, really inhibits your enjoyment of the game. And that's 
one of the big reasons why it's only number seven on the list. Otherwise, it would have been all right. The story is not that bad. Um, but if you want to like hear all of my my complaints, because I don't want to go on forever, because I can't. Um, you can look at my review of the game. Like when I t give my impressions on it, it's it's. Pr I think that video is like an hour, and it's like forty five minutes of me complaining about all the stupid shit that happens. And the, don't even ask about the DLC because, it, I mean, I got it all because I got the special edition. But like, if you didn't, you're you don't get a full story, and you don't <laughs> you don't get the best ending, and you have to like buy a separate game essentially. It's a bad decision overall. Okay, so yeah, that's a Fire Emblem Fates. But above that is another strategy game, not a strategy RPG, but a strategy game nonetheless. And this one was kind of out of left field because I didn't, I mean, I expected it to be fun for me, but I didn't expect it to be as good as it actually was. And it's a sequel to a game that I played previously, but um, this is, is Blood Bowl 2. Blood Bowl 2 was, um, I think it came out, I don't actually I don't even know if this came out in 2015 it says 2015 so thumbs up for me for not uh, screwing that up but uh, it didn't come out in Japan I had to import it and man Blood Bowl 2 was a was a surprise because they did the they changed a bit of it from the first one like if you played it on the 360 or I mean if you play the PSP version it's like even less I mean but the definitive version for the first game is obviously the PC version because it has more stuff but if you played any of those, you you go you go into it and it's like you just get dumped in this tutorial where it's just like there's so many rules and it's they're trying to explain them all to you and it's just like I don't get this. I mean I've played Blood Bowl before, so I kinda get it, but like if you didn't hadn't played Blood Bowl before, like the actual board game, you would be like kind of put off by how sharp the uh learning curve is. It's just really steep in the first game but blood bowl 2 kind of does this thing where the campaign is essentially like 90 percent of tutorial but it's not telling you so like it it just basically per each section of the tutorial it's giving you um more and more of the rules each time so like the first time you play it's just like a caveman battle there's no like special special rules beyond like run and hit stuff and get a ball in the end zone and then like after a while you it starts to introduce the actual rules like in layers and it it makes the game really easy to pick up so when you play if you play after you play through it you can you know then go into the the main part of the game which is essentially like creating your own team and playing a either online or playing i mean i guess you can play by yourself too that's what i was doing mostly it was just playing against the computer in league mode where you make your own team and you get your characters and they have like a career so they have progression they they gain experience they gain skills you can upgrade them it's it's like it's kind of like a strategy rpg football game that's the best way to explain it but this was this game was all, i had way more fun with this than um uh, probably fire emblem if um if only because it, i mean it's not as long and i didn't have to play it three times but it's it's much i mean there's no rubbing <laughs> but uh it's just a lot of fun, and if anybody has this, let me know, because I will definitely play, because, you know, I'd like to play more of this, but it's kind of, it gets a little boring playing against the computer all the time. So, yeah, Blood Bowl 2, I think that's the sixth game, maybe, maybe, yeah, sixth, sixth of the year. So, number five here, we're in the middle, is, uh, this is a Devil Survivor 2 break record, and normally I wouldn't put this because it's kind of a re-release of the DS game, but the break record part is the, or it's a record breaker in English, whatever. The, uh, the, the second half of the game is like, it's like a 40 hour game. It's like a whole game. So uh, I don't feel bad about putting it, putting it in the list, even though it's a re-release. And I did play through the first one again, and then I played the second part just to remember the story more clearly. And it was fun. This game, um, I really like the battle system for this game. It's it's kind of, really, it's it's one of my favorite strategy RPGs now. Um, and if really, if Fire Emblem takes this, the, the current path it's on, it's gonna, the next game is going to suck. So I think this game, a, next, a new Devil Survivor, I'd be really excited for because I think the, uh, 
strategy RPG elements are great. And I think the story is usually good. And a lot of things about this game, they do really well, including the characters and the character interactions are good. It does a lot of stuff really well. And I think it the story ends up being a lot better than it has any reason to be because it's kind of like, um, you know, Devil Survivor is sort of like a an anime, but it's a bit more, I don't know, a bit darker than you would expect. So I think it does a, a good job of being like a sort of Shin Megami Tensei world type of strategy RPG. And I'm, I'm looking to see if it's still... Oh, it doesn't. Okay, uh, it doesn't claim to be a in the SMT series anymore in Japan. The first one has is Megami Ibunroku Devil Survivor. And this one is not. So I guess it's just its own thing now. But it's, it's definitely part of the same world. Whatever. Um, continuing in that... Um, we've got another game, the a Wii U game. Wii U, making it onto the list. Um, this is number four for the year, and I haven't put up a review for this yet, but there will be one relatively soon. Um, I just gotta get some time to sit down and do it. And I'm, I'm like, haven't really finished the game yet. I'm like, just right at the last, last dungeon. So it's not like I'm guessing how it's gonna end up. I, I already know the story. I'm just gonna, I just gotta like get through the dungeon to the end boss. Essentially, that's all I've done. So, uh, once I will have a more in-depth review of this, but here we are. Uh, this is, what is it? Uh, Genso Ibunroku, Sharp FE, which is the former Shin Megami Tensei Cross Fire Emblem. Um, this, this game actually ends up being um, worlds better than I thought it was going to be. And, I mean, look, look at this. Look at this game. Um, it looks like um g goofy anime garbage seriously and like when they started showing the videos for that i thought like oh my god i can't believe i essentially bought a wii u to play this game and uh yeah it, it didn't look so hot and i was really worried it was going to be really heavy on the uh, anime tropes and idol world kind of thing going on I, oh, man and like the game really had me worried in the beginning because like you get into it and you're like oh this is actually not so bad and then like they're like oh you got to go practice and i was like oh jesus i'm not gonna have to do like some music rhythm games and shit in this am i but it, it never does that the practice is just like part of the story and all the idle stuff is part of the story and like the upgrade system is based like the names are changed but like to like idle related things but essentially the battle system is um it's very it's not a press turn system it's a it's a little bit different it's it's this kind of combo system based on skills and the battles themselves and a lot of the dungeons themselves actually work a lot like digital devil saga i mean if you play digital devil saga on the ps2 those are my favorite uh smt related games on the ps2 just those games are, are really good and their dungeons are great the, the gameplay is great and this game is a lot like those uh the, the way the battles work is the same you can switch characters in and out at will uh during battle you and they will start to combo from off screen sometimes so you'll get like these ridiculous uh chain combos that take forever i mean it's they'll be you'll be chaining stuff together and it's like Final Fantasy VII, Knights of the Round, you're just like, okay, I'm going to hit the button, I'm going to put the controller down and wait for the giant combo to end. So that kind of thing happens in this, especially towards the end, once you unlock everything. But yeah, overall, uh, way better than I was expecting. And I don't want to go too deep into it, because I will talk about it in in an impressions video next week, maybe. Um, so yeah, sharp FE way better than I thought it was going to be. So now we're in the top three here. And the third game is the game I originally expected would be my number one game. Uh, this is uh, Fallout 4. And Fallout 4, uh, you know, I I really like Fallout 4. I don't, I mean, I put up a review and I'm, and I think like, 
Uh, some people thought maybe I was harsh. Um, but I'm harsh out of love because this is my this is my favorite series. That it's not number one is kind of telling, though, about where it stands for not only games that came on 2015, but also in the series because it it does a lot of things good, but it doesn't do um, what it should be doing in comparison to the previous games. I mean, I've, exp I've talked about this. I think my review for this is like an hour, but it just does a lot of great things, and I enjoyed every minute of this game, but I think um, it could have been better in a lot of ways. Like, a lot of things could have been slightly changed to make this game a lot better than it ended up being. And that's not to say it's bad, because it's it's awesome. I loved this game. And I, you know, I platinum it. I beat it three or four times. Like, I played through it a ton, a ton of times. I, I like this game. Um, but it doesn't quite have the same impact as previous games and I think, like, it, the thing it does the best is the exploration. So, like, if you just like playing Fallout because you like to wander around and do nothing, um, and by do nothing, I mean just not doing the main story, just, like, wandering around and finding stuff, this game is awesome. And, like, my first playthrough, I spent, like, the first, like, 20 hours just wandering around doing no story mission. I never went to the place where you're supposed to go to start the main story mission. And I was, like, level um, 40 or something before I even started the main story. Like, I just went around doing all types of random side quest stuff it was good stuff so you know if you want to hear me complain about fallout 4 you can watch the impressions video but overall it was it was a good game and it deserves to be very high on the list which it is so there you go so let's see number two is another game that uh i really enjoyed it was it's easily like um any any year that one of these games come out, I feel like it's always a contender for the top spot because um, I, I always go into it thinking, like, how is how are they going to beat that last game? Because that last one is always awesome. The last one was so good. How are they going to beat that one? How is it going to be better? And usually you'll go into it and it, it they'll somehow do it. It'll be better. And I think, like, this is really no exception it's 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 a really fun game and it does a lot of cool things and that game is number two here is Ryu Gagotoku Zero which is Yakuza Zero um this is like the throwback game where it's in the it's in the 80s like it's got a lot of goofy 80s stuff going on that I enjoyed um you know like people with those cell phones and bags and <laughs> Um, it's got, uh, you know, things that are very Japanese, Japanese, like Japan 80s, which is, uh, not in the U.S. And sometimes it was fun to learn about those things because I hadn't seen them before or like how they're different from now, because there's always like this weird kind of comparison in the game where they're, um, angling things. They like this, the, the way they talk is like... There's always people who are like speculating about how things will change in the future, and they're all, you know they're right because they have the foreknowledge of the future. But uh, you know when you go into the game, like there's always these things like oh well you know this is gonna this is you know everyone has their beepers and stuff, and you have a beeper in the game like instead of you know in previous games you have a cell phone that you get messages on, and this you have a beeper and you always have to run to a payphone to to uh, get get messages from people, and it's really. Uh, it's it's not as convenient as previous games but like it's it makes sense in the story and this game does something else that previous games haven't done you have like this kind of business management simulator thing going on where you're taking over parts of the town with your businesses and improving parts areas to like make more money and defeat these other people who are playing this kind of like um land purchasing game uh it's it's really interesting it's it's got all this kind of stuff. You've got like running um, your kind of hostess club um, empire in two cities. And like you have, you know, like it's not the same as the previous games where you're in one club doing one club. You're, you buy a bunch of things in the area and like it affects the way the club works. And like you, you're not, uh, 
you know, dealing with one person at a time. You're dealing with like eight people at one time, sending them off to customers and stuff. It's great. It's, it's, it's a fun simulation. And I think like, um, it's the best simulation they have done so far for the hostess, uh, clubs in the game. Previously, I just, um, kind of glossed over those because I wasn't really into them. But in this one, I was really into it. I thought like it was a lot of fun. Uh, Overall, though, the story for this game is good. You get to see a lot of characters that were in previous games that are dead now. Um, you get to see, you know, like, <laughs> young Kiryu doing young Kiryu things. It's, it's really interesting. The story is always good. There's always, you know, uh, crazy twists and turns there. And I think... Um, I want, to, I want to say, like, uh, the building that everybody always fights on with their shirts off at the end of this game uh, doesn't exist in the game. So, <laughs> unfortunately, there's no uh, to uh, tower battle with shirtless dudes. Um, not that there's no battles with shirtless dudes, there's just no tower battle at the end. Um, at least not the same one. So that's a thing. But, you know, overall... This was really fun. All of these games are really fun. This series is so good. Um, easily one of my favorite series. Um, and this really... The, the, my top list here is full of my favorite series. Um, if you look at these these top four games, like, you've got, you've got a kind of an SMT-related game. You've got Fallout. You've got Yakuza. And we've got my number one game, part of... I mean, that's basically my four favorite series. And the number the number one game is, of course, Bloodborne. Um, Bloodborne, I don't, I don't know how many times I've played it. I don't know how many times I've played it through. S six or seven, maybe? That's And that's actually, like, a lot less than <laughs> I played through previous games. Except for, um, it's more than I played through, uh, it's more than I played through Dark Souls 2 much less than I played through Dark Souls and Demon Souls. So I, I guess that, I mean, it'll it'll stand around there. But Bloodborne does so much good stuff. And this is like, this is the slipcase that the uh, Japanese version comes with. It comes with like a little book and stuff. Um, but the, uh, man, so good. This game is so good in so many ways. And I think like, looking at it and and uh playing through it it looks great to me i, I mean it's a, it's a very kind of unified color palette and then it changes halfway through the game to be this a very kind of mm, i don't know amenable to my tastes color palette i think it's just a little bit better towards the second half of the game for me and in as far as how it looks but even then it still looks really good from the beginning even though like it's it's pretty unified throughout and i think it, that's that says something because like there's plenty of games that end up being like like a single color palette throughout the whole thing and people always complain about it you know like but all three it's so brown whatever but you know bloodborne doesn't have like incredibly varied environments but it still ends up not being boring and it sends ends up looking really good um, the gameplay is, is much faster than Dark Souls, which, you know, I enjoyed. I liked the fast pace of Bloodborne. I think I still prefer, really, like, um, if I'm gonna go back, like, I'm thinking about, like, if I'm gonna go back and play a Souls game immediately, like, if I had to play one right now, I'd play Demon Souls. Um, I like the hub world. I like the kind of, um, you know, sectioned off stages. And, you know, I just enjoy a lot of stuff about playing this game. And the series is really good. And, man, Bloodborne overall, just such a good game. I had so much fun with it. And, you know, sadly, I haven't even played the DLC for it. Um, I meant to get it, but, um, you know, it came out at a kind of a weird time. Like, it came out right before Fallout, and I was thinking, like, oh, I could get it, but there's no way I'm going to get to it. And I wouldn't have gotten to it. I wouldn't even got to it yet. So like, I haven't bought it yet. But eventually, I think I'll I'll 
I'll get it and go back to Bloodborne again. You, you know, it, Bloodborne, I, I, <laughs> you know, I played it a ton in a really short time, and I think like it, I got a little burned out, but at the same time, I feel like, you know, I'm not um, burned out on it in this in the sense that, um, it's it's bad. It's just I kind of, you know, got too familiar with it really quickly, and I think, you know, I feel like oh, I should play something else because I kind of familiar with this game now and so i've been you know once i'm away from it for a while i'm going to go back and i'm going to remember a lot more about why i loved bloodborne but even then like i haven't played it since like um maybe a month or two after it came out but oh man it's so so good in so many ways and i think yeah going back to it is going to be a lot more fun but even then like I, i'll probably go back to it before uh, Dark Souls 3 comes out just to get myself in a Souls mood and then Dark Souls 3 will come out and I'll be uh, all over that too so yeah that's my top 10 games of 2015 um, I'm sure everybody has a pretty different list than mine everybody always has a different list than mine because I have a different release schedule than the US I just go by my local release schedule which is Japan so there you go my top 10 is um these games and if you guys you know have uh questions complaints whatever well if you have complaints you know you might channel complaint policy is pretty clear i mean it's all complaints have to be submitted on a three by five card which i will promptly crumple up and throw away because i don't care about your petty whining but uh yeah that's uh but questions i'll answer and yeah, and if you have your own lists, uh, um, yeah, feel free to link me videos if you have a video that you think I haven't seen. I might have seen it. Um, but if you, you know, if you just want to type your list in the in the comments, that's cool too. I'm interested in what everybody else played because I think, like, I've seen other people's lists and they're really different than mine, but I think like I'm looking at the list and I'm thinking, well, none of those games came out in 2015 in Japan. And sometimes it's, it's, it's one or the other, like, uh, they'll come out in 2014 in Japan and they came out in 2015 in the U S or like they came out in 2015 in the U S and haven't come out in Japan yet. So there's that, those, those kinds of things happen. So, I mean, a lot of that's a lot of that stuff just happens. That's uh that's kind of like, I'm looking at people I like who have these lists that they put out. And some people didn't put out lists. They just kind of were like, yeah, I'm not doing that, but here's what I liked. And I thought, like, their lists were good, but I thought, like, oh, well, none of those games came out for me. Except for, like, you know, Bloodborne was high for most people. And, yeah, that's about it, though. That's, uh, that's my list. I'm just kind of rambling at this point. But I think if you're watching my channel, you're used to that by now because that's pretty much what my channel is dude rambling in front of a camera so yeah i guess that's it i will see you guys i guess next time when i do the sharp fe impressions video so yeah see you guys next time